Okay, so this is part two of creating a weekly check-in um, feedback system for your classroom. So last time we created a Google form and then we shared it out and collected a response and now we are looking at the response in Google Sheets. So what we want to do now is take um, all this information and get it to back to the students. So to do that we're going to go to the add-ons menu at the top here of your Google Sheet and get you're going to go to the bottom here and say get add-ons. It's going to load up a window here and there's actually a lot of add-ons you can use I and mean, these are fun to explore and play with. Um, I know that I'm looking for a specific add-on so I'm going to type in the word form and right up front I'm going to see form mule uh, email merge utility. Now I already have this installed on my Google Sheet so um, I'm not I'm seeing the word manage rather than this blue button with the plus. You'll probably see this if you've never used it and then it'll walk you through installing it. So I'm going to click on, um, I'm just going to close out of that so that, that um, I can go forward here. So in my add-ons list you'll see that there's the formula email merge utility and the pop-out has says setup, choose data, source data, and set merge type. So we're just going to walk through this together. So this is going to seem complicated, but it's once you get it figured out, it's really not that much. Um, so what it says right here is at the top, select the sheet that contains your email addresses and merge source data. In this case, it's going to be the one that we're on. So if I click on this, it'll say form responses one, which correlates with this tab down here. So that's the same. So it just knows where to look. I would not worry about these triggers at all, just leave those as they are. And we're going to go to next. Um, you can create multiple templates. Right now I think we should just do template one. And I like to set this up for um, right away so that you, you can use this for multiple check-ins, meaning kids can use it for more than one week. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a condition here. I only want it to send um, an email out when I when I tell it to if I haven't already sent an email to them so if I haven't processed their their um, their response and my feedback I want it to recognize that so under the send condition I'm going to change this and I'm going to um, pull it down and what I want it to look for is feedback if feedback is Null, null is just a kind of a pro programming word. If the feedback is null, then it, they will send. I'm sorry, let's take that back. If this feedback is not null, meaning it has something in it, then we're going to send an email. I'll show you what this looks like in just a minute. So right now it's processing, it's creating some information on this spreadsheet. Um, and now I'm going to be able to go over to edit templates. Again, this is going to seem complicated. Once you set this up once though, you don't have to do much in terms of changing it going forward. Now the two is going to be unique to each person that has submitted a response. In this case, we're going to use their username because that has their email. So I'm just going to click on the um, click up here, and then I'm going to click on username. And what it does is it takes that and puts it in those two um, the pointy brackets. That's kind of like um, uh, when you do a mail merge, and it actually takes um, grabs the information from that particular column. So it's going to use their their email. Um, you can car you can carbon copy or blind carbon copy someone if you would like on this. Um, and then they make you type in a reply to address, which just would be your email address as a teacher. So I'm going to type in mine, jfry at lcmschools.org. And then the subject, uh, here I like to start to customize it. So remember when we asked the student for their first name? So here I'm going to type, I'm going to click on first name. And then I'm going to say, um, Miss Fry has responded to your weekly check-in. 
so this is in the subject of the email it'll say and so it'll actually draw their name from that name box so if they say you know Josh then it'll say Josh Miss Fry has responded to your weekly check-in so that's pretty cool um, now we have to create the body of the of this so what what I like to do for my students because they may not may or may not remember what they actually wrote is um, I like to say this is what you said or what you wrote that's what I like to say and then I'm gonna go over here and again these are the merge tags so they I had asked what what is going well so I'm gonna click that what you'll notice is it does something here it's interesting um, it says it puts what is going well for this week and and then it has the tag for what is going well this week this this um, the ta the part that's inside the brackets is not going to be actually visible in the text what it is is going to plug in whatever text they wrote in that box the what is going well for you this week without the brackets is reminding them of the prompt that they actually responded to so I kind of like to make some line breaks there I'm just hitting the return key and then I ask them what are your challenges so I'm going to click on that one what are your challenges this week and I'm going to click on the return key there and then um, finally is there anything else you want me to know and then once again I'm just putting that kind of below so that's what what um, when I'm saying what you wrote I'm talking to the student right so now um, underneath that I'm going to say Miss Fry's feedback so I just type that in and now I'm going to add the feedback um, tag here. So um, because I already typed Miss Fry's feedback, I'm going to just delete the feedback text here and just keep the tag feedback. So it'll plug in whatever I typed in this box um, where this goes. Now this, so this is customized, right? It's customized to your student. Um, it's going to have their name in the subject. It's going to have what they wrote in the body and it's going to have your, what you wrote in the in the body as well. Now you can also additionally add a general announcement that will go out to everyone. So like if you want to um, add something like this week your self-portrait will be due at the end of block day. March uh, let's see, was it um, doesn't matter, 17th or March 18th. So that's like a general announcement um, that if I want all the kids to see this, that's what I would put that. All right, so that's kind of how that works. And, and that, I know that seemed like a lot of work, but in actuality, you won't have to set this up again. You can modify it at any time, but this will be, re this will be remembered by formula, so you won't have to do it again. Now, I can say preview this. And what it will do is it will show me what this is going to look like. So it says, subject, Jennifer, Miss Fry has responded to your weekly check-in. What you wrote. What is going well for you this week? It, uh, it's going well. I like the project we're working on a lot. What are your challenges this week? I'm having trouble remembering all the shortcut keys, which is frustrating. Is there anything else you want me to know? One of the people at my table is bugging me. Can we change seats? And then Miss Fry's feedback. I'm glad that you like your project, so on. You can see that's the custom text that I wrote up here. And then this week, you're, you know, you could even um, add an announcement uh, header if you wanted to. This week, your self-portraits do. So if I want to, I'm previewing it right now, but I can go back to edit if I'm like, oh, I want to change something. So like if I want to put announcement, an announce, announcement, announcement, uh, announcement, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, announcements, I could put that there. So now I can preview this again, and when I scroll through, there's announcements. So what it's looking for is um, if there's um, feedback inside of a box, then it's going to it's going to send out an email. So I'm going to click preview and send all. So I'm going to wait and let it load. If you have a lot of these, it's going to take a minute. Like I'll send out maybe 30 at a time sometimes and it'll show you this and you can actually scroll through and look at every single one if you want to but you can definitely just check your work um, it's showing you everything that um, you need to know so now I just click send now 
And this again, this might take a few minutes depending on how many students you are sending it to. I want you to notice that over here, it automatically Formule added this template one send status uh, in the H column. Um, and notice now it has notated that on this date at this time, this email was sent to this this uh, person. So it, it keeps really good track of all that. So now um, if I was the student, I would go check my email. Let me do that really quick. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back in my email. And there it is. Jennifer, Miss Fry has responded to your weekly check-in. So I can click on that as a student. And this is what it says. Just like we taught, we looked at here. So what you wrote, and it's like all the questions that I was asked, their responses, Miss Fry's feedback, and then this general announcement for everyone. So this is something that once you get this down, it's um, the automation is so amazing, and eventually you will end up with a. Um, if you keep collecting these, you will be able to review them and sort them. In fact, um, in just a moment, I'm going to pull up my existing weekly check-in form that I use in my class so you can see how much data I've collected. Alright, so I've loaded in my weekly check-in for digital art. I've been doing this since the beginning of January uh, when we got back from winter break. And so right now it's sorted by date and then the time that, that a student submitted it. So it's just an order of however they did it. So you can see I have all this information. And if I slide over here, you can see that I've sent these responses. I try to be really timely with my responses. So I think the, the quicker they get the feedback on their, um, you know, whatever their issues are, then it's, I think it's just more effective that way. So I'm scrolling through here, and I want you to just see that there's a long list here, um, very long list. And this does take time. I just sit and I go through each of these. I look at their um, what they said. And then I write in my feedback, and I just I'll sit there and do this in an evening. Um, and I actually find it just really, really beneficial um, because I get a chance to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with my students that I don't get to have in my classroom. Um, so the other thing that I want to show you is that in a spreadsheet like this, there's a lot of ways you can collect the data, sort the data, find the data. So like if I highlight the whole spreadsheet by clicking this um, empty box in the upper left corner above the one next to the A highlights the whole spreadsheet I can go to data and I can I can sort I want to select sort range I can tell it that the data has a header row that means that it's going to recognize the timestamp username first name all that so I can sort my information by whatever I want. It's already sorted by timestamp by default. So if I wanted to sort it by student name, I could say first name, and then I could sort it A to Z. So um, I might do that and say um, sort. Hold on, I want to fix that up. And then I'm going to sort it. It's going to take just a second for it to sort. So what it's now done is if you look, all the names are going to be grouped together. So for each student who's completed one of these, they, they're, they're, all of them are together. And this is a really nice way for you to be able to like look at a, at a, a series, a thread that you've had going through for a period of time. So um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you hit Command F, you'll pull up this little find in the sheet and you can actually if you're like looking for something specific like let's say I was doing the pop art project and I can't remember I know I had a lot of um, a lot of uh, topics about that I can actually search the word pop art and it'll show me every time pop art appears in here now pop arts are maybe a bad example because there's so many queries for that um, I might say something like shading and that's going to reduce it down to um, 20 results. So that gives me a little bit more to work with, a little less to work with, I should say. And so that's two ways that you can use this data quickly and sort it. And I'm just keep adding on. I have um, 340 responses so far um, over um, you know, six, seven weeks. And I'm just going to keep adding on. All right, that's it. Good luck. I hope it goes well.